Thank you for joining us for this segment of Witham Sounding Board, practical audio-based information for today's on-the-go professional, a production of Witham Smith & Brown PC. Hi, I'm Pete Lepper, Senior Manager at Witham Smith & Brown in our private equity practice. Today I'm here with Tom Angel, partner at Witham Smith & Brown and head of the private equity practice. Today we're going to be talking about fees and expenses in the private equity industry. So Tom, how are you today? Good, Pete. Glad to be here. So, Tom, why are fees and expenses such a hot topic in the private equity industry? Well, Pete, it actually started back in 2010 when investment advisors with over $150 million in regulatory assets under management were required to register with the SEC. The SEC then began what they called presence exams in October of 2012, and they were meant to establish a presence in the private equity industry. This was a period where the SEC was trying to get an understanding of how the private equity industry operated and to assess the issues and risks that the private equity industry had within the general economy. So what was the result of these presence exams? Well, there were a few items that the SEC found concerning. The two main items were fees and expenses and valuations. So we're just going to talk about fees and expenses today. And the results of the presence exams actually led to enforcement actions. The first enforcement action was brought in February of 2014 against the firm called Clean Energy Capital. They had charged that Clean Energy allocated various payroll expenses to the fund instead of the management company. There have been several other highly publicized cases of fee and expense charges over the last year or so. Prior to the registration, it was typical for advisors to collect fees and expenses from portfolio companies with offsets against the management fees of 50% or less. In fact, there was little transparency to the investors. Over time, as LPs became more aware of the fees being collected for the portfolio companies, the management fee offsets have increased to the point where most funds now have between 80% to 100% offset against the management fees. I see. What types of expenses and fees are we talking about? Well, there's a wide range of fees and expenses that have been looked at by the SEC, as well as how these expenses are allocated between the fund, the management company, and the portfolio company and also potential co-investments. Many of the limited partnership agreements are broad in their characterization of the types of fees and expenses that can be charged to portfolio companies and gives the GP a lot of latitude in its application. Such items as broken deal fees, monitoring fees, advisor fees, payroll and benefits have all come under scrutiny. And what are the issues? The issues aren't just the expenses themselves, but how they are structured and allocated. The biggest issue found by the SEC is a lack of disclosure of the investment advisor's practice and the potential conflicts of interest in the expense charges and allocations. Back in May of 2014, in a speech given by Andrew Bowden, who was Director of Compliance Inspections and Examinations at the time, said that in regard to expenses, half the funds that were looked at in the President's exams either had perceived violations of law or material weaknesses and controls. So let me give you some examples of the types of concerns the SEC expressed. Consultants or operating partners, as they are known in the industry, are typically charged to the fund or portfolio company. Operating partners are used to generate value through operational improvements. The concern of the SEC is that these operating partners are marketed to LPs as part of the advisor to enhance the expertise of the investment manager. The investment manager is deriving this benefit even though the fund or portfolio company is paying the fees. In addition, the fees the operating partners receive are rarely used as offsets to management fees, as discussed before. There's virtually no transparency on this issue. Another item of concern was accelerated monitoring fees. So monitoring fees are charged to portfolio companies by advisors for such things as board seats or other advisory services. The advisor has caused some of its portfolio companies to sign long-term monitoring agreements. And these agreements could be for more than 10 years, even though the typical portfolio holding period is five years. Upon a liquidating event, such as a sale or an IPO, the remaining term of the contract is accelerated, thus benefiting the advisor with additional funds. Again, little disclosure to the LPs in this area. One other example is related party service providers and the conflicts that that brings. The advisor could dictate the terms of hiring the related party, the SEC has questioned the value provided to the portfolio companies from the related party advisors. I see. And what is being done in the industry to correct this perceived problem? Many funds that have reviewed the issues brought to light by the SEC and its presence exams and have taken corrective measures in how they are actually handling fees and expenses, and also how they are allocating those expenses between the management company, funds, and portfolio companies. Some of the fines on the high-profile cases were not as severe as they could have been because the advisors had started remedial action on the issues 
prior to the SEC's president's exams. So they had taken a look back and realized that there was a problem and decided that let's correct this. And when the SEC came in, they said, okay, they're already working towards this, so the fines will be less. And new funds, the LPAs are being written with more specific language as to how fees and expenses will be handled, as well as giving more overall transparency to the investors. Okay. Recently, the ILPA, the, the Institutional Limited Partners Association, released a fee reporting template to try to capture all the expenses and fees charged by the advisor and how they are to be allocated. How has this been received? Well, the template is meant to improve transparency and bring a global reporting standard to the industry. The template is detailed as to the type and amount of fees charged to the portfolio companies. It also details the fees charged to the fund's LPs. There is also a section that shows the percentage of management fee offsets, as well as the dollar amount for each of the previously discussed expenses. The template itself has gotten the backing of some of the industry's biggest players. The issue right now is that the ILPA is made up of only 320 LPs. Granted, they are the largest investors in the world, but it leaves out many LPs that are not part of the ILPA and have not had the chance to comment on the template. It may be a difficult process to get this particular template to be a global standard. An interesting question would be how funds are dealing with this issue currently and what their plans are in the future. Witham, Smith & Brown is one of the sponsors of a survey being performed by private fund manager titled PFM Fees and Expenses Survey 2016. This should give us some insight in how funds are reacting to the items brought up by the SEC. The results of the survey should be out sometime in September of 2016, and we'll probably have another podcast. Thank you, Tom. That was very informative. Are there any websites you suggest to obtain more information? If you want, you go to the ILPA website just to see what a list of the uh, fees and expenses are. And there's a discussion within their website talking about the various issues that have come about and what they're trying to remediate in terms of more transparency to the LPs and a more detailed schedule so everybody's on the same page when they're looking at documents from general partners. Thank you for your time today, Tom. Thank you, Pete. You've been listening to Witham Sounding Board, practical audio-based information for today's on-the-go professional. How can Witham help put you in a position of strength? Contact us with your feedback or suggestions for future podcast topics. Visit www.witham.com for additional information. Send an email to info at witham.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Witham CPA. Thank you for listening.